These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about nicotine vape flavor bans. With the new legislation season upon us, chances are we're gonna see a rash of new nicotine vape flavor bans across the United States. So today I wanted to try to answer the question of, do these nicotine vape flavor bans affect youth e-cigarette use and are there any unintended consequences? The answer to the first one is yes and no, but with a big but. And the answer to the second question, I think, is the big but. Let's start with Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, Canada, has had a nicotine vape flavor ban for the last few years. The Canadian Vaping Association up there in Canada is asking why Nova Scotia has yet to produce any data showing a decline in youth vaping since its flavor ban. Nova Scotia's 2021 financial statements display a dramatic increase in cigarette sales. Tax revenue was 11.5 million, or 5.9% higher than the estimate, primarily due to an increase of 5.6% in the consumption of cigarettes. The report concluded that the flavor ban did not prevent access as intended and instead pushed vapors back to smoking while removing the regulatory environment that served to protect youth. So it didn't reduce youth e-cigarette use in Nova Scotia and it actually raised cigarette smoking levels. But that doesn't happen everywhere, right? Not like San Francisco. San Francisco has had a flavor ban on the book since 2018. So shouldn't their youth vaping have just disappeared completely? Well, in 2021, Abigail Friedman from the Yale School of Public Health did a study on this very subject and found San Francisco's ban on flavored tobacco product sales was associated with higher odds of self-reporting recent smoking among minor high school students relative to trends in other school districts. That means in San Francisco where they banned flavors, youth smoking went up and in other surrounding districts where they didn't ban flavors, youth smoking didn't go up. Do we want youth smoking to go up or down? Now Massachusetts has had a flavor ban since 2020 and a 75% excise tax on all vaping products. And when they looked into the effects of this legislation, researchers found that there was no significant decrease in e-cigarette purchases in the greater Boston convenience market after the tax implementation. However, we found that e-cigarette purchases decreased significantly while cigarette purchases increased after several bans on e-cigarettes and numerous policy statements related to the Evoli outbreak. These results suggest that the Massachusetts flavor ban and tax did not reduce e-cigarette consumption in the greater Boston area and that messaging questioning the safety of e-cigarettes led to an increase in combustible cigarette use. Well, the trend so far seems to be that no, it does not deter vape use and seems to increase combustible cigarette use. Is this the future that public health wants? But you're probably saying to yourself, those were all local flavor bans. Surely a big national nationwide flavor ban would completely deter youth use and be good for public health, right? Well, the University of Rochester Medical Center used survey results published in the journal Tobacco Control show that less than 5% of the 3,500 adult e-cig users who reported to the survey quit using e-cigs in response to the flavored e-cig ban. The rest of the respondents switched to other forms of flavored e-cigs not covered in the band and other types of tobacco products. Those other types types of tobacco products were cigarettes. The FDA got people who had quit smoking back to cigarettes. 14% switched to combustible products like cigarettes. Extrapolate 14% of the 3,500 respondents to the 13 to 15 million ex-smoker current vapors we have nationwide in the US right now, and think about how many people that the FDA sent back to smoking by banning flavored pods. So I guess the answer to the question at the beginning of the video was, do they deter youth use? And the answer seems to be, well, sometimes. Are there any unintended consequences? Yes, those youth start smoking and adults in states with flavor bans go back to smoking cigarettes. Is this where I need to remind everybody that the UK is giving away 
free e-cig starter kits to people who smoke in their country. Flavor bans are bad for public health. Flavor bans are bad for youth vaping. Flavor bans are good for youth smoking. And flavor bans are literally being thought up and introduced in every state across the republic. So please join CASA and stop these flavor bans before they get started. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay smoke free every single day, unless your government forces you back to combustible cigarettes. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so 